like we up and rolling, G. We running? Look, look, ow. <laughs> look, welcome, welcome back. Look, I'm kind of with it. Just listen, we've been, we've been moving, trying to make something happen. I'm just saying. Uh, but welcome back to another episode where I uh, talk your shit. Look who I got to. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> look, it ain't nothing like being able to do an episode with your bestie. Who I'm just saying? Where's that? But we still working. Still working. Okay. Tell me, I'm just saying. I'm saying. It's family. Like sister. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's but, what um, it is. It, 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 it looks. Just saying. Because we about to pop some bottles in this little. You know what I'm talking about? Because we look thirsty. But what's going on? What's happening? What, what you tell me, Joseph? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get this thing started. All right. So we have a multi topic. Uh, conversation today so we're gonna hit on the, on, on a few different things right so make sure y'all tap in, tap in on the keyboard so that way we can make sure that uh we incorporate your comments in the live but uh we're gonna kind of go over the the um the topics or maybe just um of uh, or, well, let's just say subjects that just need, that we're going to hit on. Because it might not necessarily care a full time. That's why it's the most. I'm going to pop this. Okay. So we got a couple of topics that we're going to talk about today. What we're basically going to do is ask some questions and get your feelings on them so we can know how everybody feels about different topics. Um, we just want to know what y'all think. So chime in. Let's talk about it. Okay. Can we pop about? Ooh, this is about to be good. I guess I'll top y'all first. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. All right, so why she porn? Let's let's start with something simple. When is social media too much? I mean, with the recent things going on, we've seen people go live. And tell all their business. We know when husbands cheating with other men. Like I've seen so much on social media. Um, we've seen people get killed on social media. Yeah. Um, when is it too much? When is enough enough? When do you stop talking? Absolutely. And also, just to say a little bit on the too much, like men. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like your, your chicks is doing too much when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, being too revealing? Just saying. Or you think, do you think that they're showing too much? So it's, it's like she said, like, is there a boundary or well, line in the sand as far as to what we would actually post on social media or you just don't give a damn, you're just posting anything? I mean, because then when you think about it, if you're on a date with a woman and all she does is she want to take pictures, like, how do you get to know that female? Is starting out the first date too much with extra social media? Yeah. Chime in, let us hear your comments. What do you think, well, I would just say, what, what do you think? Well... When it comes to, I do think that, it, I think it needs to be a lot in the sand. Um, when it comes to what we post on social media. The, the, the going live when it's time to kill somebody. I mean, obviously, there's a, they, they try to prove a point. It okay. might not go on the pen. I mean, you, well, I guess, I, well, clearly they're trying to make a point. So you must want some form of attention. For you to have to go live, then that means that somebody ain't paying you, you no attention mm -hmm. or the person who it is that you're having an issue with that you feel like you need to d handle it on live with, mm -hmm. they ain't taking you serious. So you like, oh, nigga, you're going to take me serious today. Well, and, and I will say this. I think that it just depends on the person because you have women that are very social media active, but you have men that are just as active that are jumping social media and be active with them. So I guess it just depends on the person you're dating and how much they're willing to accept. Um, I know that what I will do as a tale of caution is I see that a lot of people post when they're on vacations and when they're on the cruise ships or when they're on, they go out of town. If somebody doesn't like you or somebody thinks that you have the money and you post that you're in New York or you post that you're on a cruise ship, that's the absolute perfect time to run up in your spot. So sometimes you need to post that stuff when you get home and not while you're on your vacation. Just a rule of thumb. Oh, I was going to say, run up in your spot. You said perfect time, Rob. Yeah, definitely. Let me see your phone. Let me see your phone. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. I mean, because at the end, you know, because a lot of people do it. What they do is they, they turn their location off or they don't like to let you know where it is 
where they're, where they're located at for that particular reason, right? Right. So they turn their location services off. Yeah, it turns. All right. So how do y'all feel about when it comes to the, you know, like being too provocative? Is, is there such thing as being too provocative? <laughs> is you showing too much, Jennifer? Um, I just think that, um, for one, I'll say it depends on your mate. Because some people, oh, like I would say with that's Kanye good. West and Kim Kardashian, uh -huh. he dressed her most of the time. So her outfits came from him because he wanted to show off. So it just depends on how your spouse feels about it. And then you have to think if you're single and you're trying to find a mate, mm -hmm. it depends on the man that you're looking for again. Because does a man want somebody that is always on social media showing her behind? And vice versa. So I think it just depends on the person. And I think it depends. A lot of people just don't care. I mean, at this point, if you're going to show everything, get all the fans and get paid for it. I agree with that last goddamn comment. I'm just saying. <laughs> about a nigga dressing me, I don't know. <laughs> like I, feel about, I don't know how I feel about somebody dressing me. Because I feel like I'm grown enough to be able to dress myself. Now, granted, when you say Kanye and Kim, I mean, they got brands. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That, they, that they represent. But for these everyday people... Hey, I'm gonna I'm, I'm just need you to trust my judgment. You know what I'm saying? When I go in there and close and pick out what it is that I want to put on. Now, I am gonna keep you in mind. You know what I'm saying? How, 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 you know, how I present myself out here. Because I do believe that, you know, you gotta leave something to the imagination, right? I mean, so then that just takes us back to, I think, looking at, um, Jaw Jacking podcast. We were talking about the different, yesterday they were talking about something similar to this with when it's too much showing too much. So, um, shout out to Jaw Jack and Podcast. I will say that um, they talked about that yesterday and mm -hmm. the difference from being slutty and thirsty. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the same thing what we're talking about here. When it's too much, too much. I want to hear from the men. Do you do you care if your woman is out there, you know, clapping her booty cheeks for the world to see? It's, I mean, I ain't really doing no booty cheek clapping, but men eat pancakes too, so I'm still straight with Girl, that. Girl, shut up. Men eat pancakes too. <laughs> you know, everybody ain't got a but don't cut down. Niggas eat pancakes too. I mean, some people wear them don't sit on out and just clap. They clap. Yeah, I ain't making clap. You know, they, I eat pancakes too, but I just I, I thought about I eat pancakes, but I I, I don't fuck females. I only know to put that. Well, I'm just subject. Look. Well, I'm packing in the back. I'm packing in the cat. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Girl, well, I ain't messing know. with you. Look, yeah, you, you ain't messing with me. No, definitely Look, not. I don't care if you. No, definitely not. Look, I ain't bad. But, yeah, I do believe that it is definitely a difference between being slutty. What's the difference? And, 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 thirsty. and thirsty. I mean, well, both of them, can be a combination of the two. I mean, but because I think, you can have slutty and thirsty on both both genders. I think slutty can be more on the provocative side, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? You just, you, 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 you got, you, you using what you got to get what you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, if say, for instance, you're trying to get your following up, trying to get your brand out there, you know what I'm saying? In that case, you're going to show a couple, you know what I'm saying? You're going to show a little breast, right? You're going to show a little cleavage, right? You're going to show a little ass, you're going to show a little thigh, you know what I'm saying? You're going to put them heels on, you're going to make it do what it do. I feel like that's slutty, but it can be used for purpose. Okay. When it comes to thirsty, the twerking, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no face in the camera, just straight ass, you know what I'm saying? Low cut, you know what I'm saying? Draw me, you don't too damn much, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what exactly is it that you're trying to attract? I will say that some people think that when people say she don't need to do all that, they feel like I mean, somebody do is jealous. Too. They jealous of the female that's able to do that. Let me just say that. I mean, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. It can be a situation where people like stop hating on her. She look good the way that she's doing it. Because I think that things can be done as far as in the booty clapping and stuff. And some things can be tasteful. Um, I mean, you got the goddamn rundown strip club, Uncle Harry's, where they in there, you know, shooting dollars. And then you got the high class. You know, strip clubs as members only. So I think that it's, you know, you can do the same thing with a different I'll take taste. I think the same thing, thing different taste. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. What you got? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, though. But I do believe that it's definitely is. It's, it's a lot of the same when it comes to thirsty. Okay. And, 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 and the slutty. Yes, I know. Because I know I have seen something where they done posted something on social media where he's saying that I won't want my woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Having a click is all over social media. Yeah, I went. 
I mean, but it's the same. Would you want me. your dude? I mean, because we just talk I'm about saying, with it. Now, I would just, I'm going to just be honest. When I see, when I go to social me media and mm -hmm. I see men on social media with them gray sweatpants and they eggplant be swing a lane, I'd be like, yeah, dang. And I'm looking. I'm telling you, I'm looking. So if you throw on some gray sweatpants and your man out there with gray sweatpants on, I'm watching your man no slanging and dangling. But what I will say is, if he was mine, no. Because the reality of it is, is that he's yours to a certain extent. Because once he walks out that door, he, still he, he belongs to whomever he decides he to talk to. He for the, If your man for the streets, then he for the streets. So you can say, oh, that's my man, and I love this, and I'm going to stick beside him. But when he walk outside and he belongs to the streets, it ain't really nothing you can do. So what I will say is if that man was mine, I wouldn't like him um, throwing the pics because we thirsty. I see him throwing the pics and I shoot my shot and he go for it. I don't care about him being your man at that point. Ooh. Because your man don't mean nothing to me. Now, your husband might, but your man... I mean, but if you don't know, no. think that's somebody's husband, then I mean... I mean, some people that know that that's somebody's husband, it just depends on the person and them people because that's a whole other conversation because I feel differently about cheating than a lot of other people do. Now, back to the nigga in the sweatpants. I, you know, Dang I... <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it got to be something to catch my attention, you know, for me to be able to be like, oh, okay, nigga, work with something, right? Okay. But that ain't really my thing. You know, that ain't my thing. You know, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't know. I don't never really look at me and be like, I want to see what that dick do. You know what I'm saying? I can look at you and I can be like, oh, nigga, track, nigga, sex, right? You know what I'm saying? But then I ain't got, you know, like, my coochie ain't tingling. Well, I ain't going to say it's tingling, but I be like, God dang, nigga working with the law, working with the law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, ain't nothing shaking like over there. Yeah. So, so I'm saying from that, it's a, just a spinoff to what attracts you. What's the first thing you see when you see a man? Spinoff. Because for me, I think teeth are something that's very, you know, a man with a nice mouth will grab my attention. Now, what a ruin it is because I'm a person that, that's attracted <laughs> to a person's mind, but I ain't laying next to a Gillip monster. So, you can be smart as heck, but I don't want to lay against nobody that look like no raccoon or nothing. But... The first thing that's going to catch my attention is a man's smile. If he smells good, definitely his shoes. Because if they ran over, that's a different conversation. Unless it's like a work boot ran over. But if it's just a regular tennis shoe ran over, then that's a no. I don't know. It's a couple of different things that, that, that catch my attention. But I walk with my head down. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But I have a tendency to walk with my head down. So in order for, me, for you to be able to get my attention, then you're going to probably need to say something. Or you might walk by me and I might smell something. You're talking about if I smell, smell something, they will smell. it's definitely going to make me lift my head up and be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Man alert, man alert, you know what I'm saying? So it might make me, it might put me there. So, but you gotta be appealing, right? In order for me to be able to lock in on you, you be like, ooh. Okay, so what if you have a man that's super duper attractive, but his conversation is just ridiculous? Yeah, it's a, it's a ridiculous in what way? Ridiculous as in you can't hold a conversation with somebody. No, like, it's a no -go. all he talk about, yo bae, yo bae. No, like, no he has absolutely nothing to say. You can be, you know, I mean, Boris Koji fine. And How are we going to be able to get to know anything about you? Because you, you can't hold a conversation. Exactly. Honestly, honestly, so but, honestly, no you know, if the sex know, dude, you might just How about if you're a dude who only want to talk about sex? That, that's a complete turn off for me. I mean, which, which, which is another spinoff to dick pics in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the inboxes. Does that turn you ladies on when they just come? Like, okay, so for me. The, you know, they need the date and site issue and things like that. And the first thing that they want to do is send you a picture. They, I'm over it. Like, at that point, block. Because if you don't send it to me and you've been talking to me in a couple hours, then you just got dingling all over the world. You pray. Dick all over the That's world tonight. Like you pray so, I, I mean, to some of them, <laughs> to be honest, some of them shouldn't have sent them because they ain't got no business I think, but that's there. the conversation that, that we have on the back end. Like, mm -hmm. that's the thing should be wasting time. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Bro, you put that little shit on. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Stop playing with it. You know what I'm talking about? But, Which is another one. I'm just saying. That's what I'm I'm not with the dick pictures. I'm, I'm cool on that. I don't want it. I'm not even, I'm not the chick that's going to even really send you something if I'm being honest. You know what I'm saying? Now, I will. Now, that's the part of the thing. And he I asked mean, me to send him something. Then, you know what I'm saying? Just out of respect and making sure that I want to please my partner, then I might send it to you. But I'm not that chick that be like, ooh, let me go, let me, ooh, I can put, let me go take a picture for bad. That's really not really what my mind go at, if I'm being honest. Okay, so if you're in a relationship with somebody that you trust and you trust that they're not going to use your um, pictures that you sent to them, how do you feel about every now and then spicing it up from like this waiting for you at home? You know what I'm saying? Like I've seen. You talking about would it be a picture? 
be a picture, yeah, be a song, that. you know what I'm saying? And then, I ain't opposed to it. Yeah, does that, man, does that turn you on every now and then? Like you out there playing basketball and you go get some water and check your phone and whoa, game over. Party, party over. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, time to go. Well, time to go. <laughs> hey, I got something I need to have right quick. Hell yeah. I know a nigga who ain't who gonna say nay to that. I mean, unless it's Not bad. now that I can never tip. Unless it's bad. Unless it's bad. Unless it was bad? Bad. Well, why, you, why are you still messing with them? I mean, she why, might be a Why does she still have the title or the label? She might be a paymaster. Do, men, do you stay if she pay? I'm just saying, because all men that are in relationships, some men in relationships because they're homeless, and you provide them a roof. Well, for same question to you. Do you stay if you pay? If the price is right, I just might. <laughs> I mean, because I'm well, be a good nigga to keep in a back pocket. I mean, because you know how I am. I'm I'm so emotionally detached from stuff because I just feel like I have. I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. And if it's not it, I just don't waste time investing my time in it. So, but you just said different. for the right price. For the right price, I might make it work, but I won't have any emotions to it. If the money run out, then so so does the time. So does the, <laughs> so does that conversation with him and I because it's not based on me feeling that person. It's based on. Finance, what they financially can do for me. And so if the money ain't right, then I'm not emotionally attached. I shut down and you can go on on because I'm never going to get in a situation to where I have to depend on a man. And I know that a lot of men feel like that's being too strong or too independent. But the reality of it is when you're not strong enough and you're not independent enough, you're left in a situation where you're left to pick up the pieces by yourself and you don't know how to move forward. I need every woman to hear this. Don't ever put yourself in a position to depend on a man, to if he left you tomorrow, whether it be he was murdered, killed, died, or just decided he didn't want to be with you no more, can you pick up the pieces and move on without him? That's the question. I mean, but where I, I, yeah, we find ourselves in these situations all the time, and it may not necessarily just be for the woman because it's 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 situations that the men been put in too, where they, it ain't so easy for them just to walk away. It is, but um, I. I it is. I probably should agree because at some point, oh, I got another question off, off, off that, right? So I'm, I'm going to write that down. But I do believe that at some point, you do have to allow a man to be a man. Like, say, for instance, if you got, oh, you, you, you have a man who, who wants to be that type of head of the household. Well, definitely. Okay, they sit down, chill out, I don't want you to work, right? But you still got to have some wherewithal, right? You still got to have some. You know, if this nigga say his shit over with, now you realize that he was the sole provider. Mm -hmm. You still got to be able to know how to make shit work. And I believe, you know, because I don't believe in setting up shit behind your party back. Like, you got this secret account, bank account. Now, obviously, you should feel a separate way. But I don't feel like you should have to be doing all that extra secretive shit behind the bitch back. But, I mean, if niggas predominantly the man who's taking care of everything financially, you do have to... You have to be aware to know that if the situation in, how you gonna be able to get out of this? How you gonna be able to live life apart from him? But I'm a bitch that's gonna make it work regardless because I was in that situation. I don't know if I agree with not saving a little bundle on the side. But no, I ain't saying not do it. I just don't feel like it don't have to be a secret. No, I mean, it don't have to be a secret, but I mean, I don't want it to be like I'm saving for a rainy day, but at the reality, if, at some point, I think that relationships fail when each spouse doesn't have something of their own. Meaning, when he comes home from work, he wants you to have the food done. He wants you to have the kids taken care of. The conversation is, for him, he can tell you about his day at work. Your conversation every day is what you did at home with the kids. Like, at some point, when does it get boring? When does it get to where you have something of your own, your own identity? Because now... That's where a lot of, if you if you look at statistics, a lot of marriages end up going separate ways once the children are adults. Because at that point, the wife or the homemaker, because um, some men are stay-at-home dads, no longer have responsibility in dealing with the kids. So now their day is doing absolutely nothing. Now they're calling you 20 times a day, what you doing, what you doing. You mean no outside activity so, because they definitely doing something. No, I mean outside. Yeah. You, because <laughs> if you're, if, as a, as a stay-at-home parent, your generally your day-to-day -day activities is taking care of the kids. Once those kids are gone and off to college and you no longer have those general day-to-day -day activities, what has your life become? Absolutely. So I think everybody should have something for them. Absolutely. I agree. I totally agree. What was the question and you I... had with? <laughs> I don't want to forget the question. 
<laughs> Look, cause you know when you interrupt my th my train of thought, like it, it takes me down. Now I forgot what the heck I was gonna say, cause I was gonna say something in regards to what it is that you was gonna say. Write it down. But I didn't. I, you didn't. You didn't throw me off. Okay. Damn it. All right, well, in talking about that, we have a lot of people that talk about how we were just talking about um, wanting a man with money or making sure that the man is financially secure, zada, zada, zada. But, and I think y'all kind of touched on this on the show that you did with Bernard about men being ahead of the household and taking care of the money and a woman shouldn't have to work. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people look for men that are financially stable. Men that are financially stable can move how they want to move. Um, and you would have to definitely, you know, have his attention because men that are financially stable are definitely a hot commodity. But is a man that is emotionally available, like a man who listens to you, who cares about um, what you have to say, who makes you feel secure with giving him your heart, um, a person that's going to love you unconditionally. But on the flip side of that, he's not a thousand there. He a hundred there. You know what I'm saying? He can make <laughs> things happen. You know, he can put something on it. Correct. So is it what's what's better for you? Somebody that can provide for you and treat you, you know, like you're disposable, or a man who will sleep in a cardboard box with you, give you everything you need, and treat you like a queen? Um, which man would you choose? I mean, what's what's your what? Well, first of all, because I mean, it really depends on what it is that you uh, how you feel like a queen need to be treated. I mean, because if you only put some on it, I don't I don't know if you really treat me like a queen. I don't know if you're capable of being able to treat me like a queen. You might be able to, you know what I'm saying, with some, some little sweet knots in my dog on my ear, telling so, me that she's beautiful, telling me that she's talented, make sure you be supportive. You know what I'm saying? Put some on it when you can. But is that really being treated like a queen? Okay, so I'll say for like the, the boss, the boss of that, for the job that I work at now. Um, they was in the military, didn't have much money. When they got ready to have their um, first baby, um, they did a baby shower that they had beer kegs. And they um they asked all of the people that came just to bring pampas because they didn't even think they would be able to afford pampas for the um, baby that was together. She stuck by him, no money. They build together. They encourage each other. Today they millionaires because she believed in him when he didn't have anything. It's harder for a man to trust you when you come into the situation when he's already established. That's why I'm asking, do you mind building with somebody? I ain't saying he's going to be broke forever, but do you mind building with somebody? Or does that person already have to have it? Because if he already has it, he had it before you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's okay to build with somebody who has the potential to build with? No, I ain't talking about nobody that wait for you to go to work every day, lay back in your car like Jody and ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? So this ain't no baby boy situation, but I'm talking about somebody with potential <clears throat> that ain't there yet. I don't know, because that brings up an interesting point. Because normally I'm all on board, right? You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with extending. I'm, like, I'm okay with extending a little grace. You know what I'm saying? I got a little understanding for you. They say the sound was going out. Okay, can you guys hear? Mic check, mic check. Can y'all hear? Just want to make sure that everybody's able to hear now because they said the device was going out. They can hear because Keisha said bill, yes, but a okay. certain age, the house should be built. I agree. I ain't saying going to get nobody grown, grown behind sun and build them up. I'm saying, yeah, but yeah. like not the ones up under us. I mean, because right now I'm definitely not dating a man that's walking. So what I'm saying is, but um, he was skipping in your in your scenario. He might wasn't walking, but you know what? I, what I'm saying is, a man, the house should be built. What I'm saying is, things have happened to people. You have people that have been incarcerated and came home and had to start over. I'm just saying, life happens to everybody. You can be on top of date, and if you're on the top, there's nowhere else to go but down. So what I'm saying is, somebody that just hasn't been sitting around. Like, I, I don't remember the movie. The man just kept coming up with this idea, idea, and his wife didn't believe in him. Once it made it, he had to move on I, to somebody that I, believed I, I, in him. I, 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 and, and, and now you now you looking stupid because your husband had moved on because you didn't believe in his dream. He was out working, but you just didn't believe in a dream. At what point does a person he stay He was not working. He was sitting down and letting the wife take care of him. But he was working on what he had to work on, and the wife was listening to her sisters, which brings us to another point. People' opinions about what's going on your, in your household can negatively affect your relationship okay, or your we'll marriage. Okay, we that so we can address the first one. Okay. Because we, because I, I want to make sure that we'll jump all over the place and make sure that everybody gets a chance to be able to jump in on the on on the current um, current uh, 
Acrimony, that's right, acrimony. Yeah, that was it. He's right. said, at skipping. Yeah, <laughs> it is, because he definitely, he probably wasn't walking, but the motherfucker was definitely skipping. But it takes me back, when you said that, you know what I'm saying, are we willing to basically, uh... <laughs> You should say that guy darn dream took forever. Come on now, how long is too long when you build it? it Good question. Golly. But it takes me back to um, the friend zone conversation that we had with Sisuela. Okay. When Sisuela was like, ah, because I was saying, like, you got to do who who basically only able to do the free shit, right? Right. But you know, sexy as fuck, you know what I'm saying? He got all that shit that's appealing, right? Mm-hmm. To the eye. But you don't really got anything else to bring to the table. And she was just like, you know, I ain't with building the man up at this point. So it, it really has to be a balance. Because I think that you can run into someone, whether it's a male or whether it's a female, that was definitely down on hard times, right? They may have been up here, but right now, they didn't hit a period where, you know what I'm saying, shit a little tight right now, you know what I'm saying? But I still got a plan. And that, that's called life happening. But at least you got a plan, you got a vision, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that doesn't happen. And you know what I'm saying? Now you at a at a little bit of a plateau, but it, but we know that it ain't gonna stay there. Or okay. even if you realize it's gonna stay there in that category, you got a mind where you 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 know how to make a vision. You create a different uh, you can create a different lane that's gonna bring you some income. Cool. I'm gonna go with that other all day. I mean, because mm-hmm. you ain't sitting down. You know how to improvise. You know how to get up and make another lane work. You are you're a go giver. Now you got somebody who ain't ain't. I'm too old for that right now. I ain't, I ain't coming here and you just saying I'm just not getting out of school. You really ain't got nothing. You know no no nothing. No, I'm good. I'm good. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm try please. You know what I'm saying? We can't take advantage of everything out there. You know what I'm saying? Even if I see that it's potential, that's just not what I want right now in my dog life. I'm good with I being on the build a bill. You you some, let somebody else build you up. I'm cool with that. Because everybody in fair. Yeah. You can't, everybody, you can't, everything you, you everybody. can't touch every set, every good ass that out here. Cause that's what we want to do. Cause you know, when we see something that we feel like is good. But we may not be interested in everything about him. Mm-hmm. Like he might have everything going on, going on for him, but he ugly as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Or he, or it might be the opposite. So what it is is we always want to take it and put it in our back pocket because, like they say, it's it's more women out here than it is men. So we always want to put everybody in our back pocket, and then we want to pick and choose. No, let somebody else have them. Find me stingy. They say, mm mm, let somebody else do it. Cause thank you. <laughs> Hello. I came with these comments. They take me out. Yeah, somebody else doing it. It was something else that I just said. Put a pin in it, and we'll come back to it. Keisha, what we put a pin in? Um, it was something about being emotionally, uh, I'm gonna say, financially available, and um, I'm not sure. We're gonna start right now. I, I probably need some more Stella Rosa to um, make me remember. Yeah. Hello. It's probably the Stella Rosa that helped me remember what we was trying to put a pin in, because I definitely um, didn't get a pin. Oh, that's bubbly. Bubbly. So, another thing was while we waiting on what we had to put a pen in because we was all over the place. Um, yes, and what? I read something that said stop being so understanding. It um, makes you look over the disrespect. So, for me, I um, took that as saying, you know, when a man mess up, at what point does so many mess ups cause you to look like you're allowing him to be disrespectful? What do you mean disrespectful? If a man mess up in y'all relationship, you don't call him doing something. Okay, you forgave him because everybody human. Then you turn around and check his phone, and he, he now he got all these. Other, he communicated with another woman. At what point is being understanding like okay, I'm gonna forgive, I'm gonna forgive, I'm. Fi-. At what point is enough enough? I think everybody got a limit. What's your limit? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Repetitiveness is 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 my limit because I'm okay. I'm cool. I feel like whatever it is that we encounter in life, we'll figure out how to resolve this shit. Now I feel like if it's something that just uh, is reoccurring, it's happening all the time, then it's a, it, it goes a little bit deeper. We're gonna need to sit down and have a different level of conversation okay. with you just telling me that I done did it again. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, you just want me to forgive you, and we just keep it moving. Because I am a woman who don't like details. But if I realize that you keep doing this shit over and over again, eh, baby, you're going to need to come over here and sit down to the table. Maybe we need to get down to, you know, because at this point, I feel like we need to dig deep. We need to see exactly why it is that you keep doing the same shit. Okay, so that's that's my question. Because if I've told you as a person, and we sat down and we done had a conversation, and I tell you that when you do ABC, 
I don't like that. It makes me feel this way. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow he does ABC again. Is that disrespectful? Is that him saying, I don't care? How do you take that? Because if you turn a person that that hurts you or that bothers you and they constantly do it, do they care about your feelings? What? When does it get to be enough is enough? If they know clearly that that bothers you and they still do it, then I feel like they don't care. I feel like all of it is disrespect. You know what I'm saying? And of course, the person, you know what I'm saying, the... The person who is being offended, of course they're going to feel like somebody don't damn care, right? Mm-hmm. That's, 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 it's natural. You know what I'm saying? For you to feel as though that somebody don't care about your feelings, especially if I done told you that, motherfucker, you know, damn well I don't like that. And here it is, you got your punk ass out there doing the very thing, the very thing that I told you that I don't necessarily like. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can tap onto an experience, right? Because I done, you know, I, people know that I'm very open, right? When I cheated in my marriage, right? So when I go to this situation, I, you know what I'm saying, for one, I take accountability. But also, man, when you're in that situation, man, you not, I'm listening. In the beginning, I may have, husband may have been to the forefront of my mind. Can't do it like that. And this is a whole bunch of other was to the forefront of my mind. But at some point, you get tunnel vision. You are into the current situation. You're not necessarily thinking about them. Now, even though it's disrespectful, we clearly know that you may not be considering your mate's feelings or anything else in that moment. Ain't nobody trying to intentionally hurt you. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's it's just it's sticky. So I don't know. Cause I don't think nobody intentionally trying to hurt you. But just because somebody is is not intentionally trying to hurt you, don't mean that you got to stay in this situation. Cause you still got a goddamn no choice to be understanding of him actually explaining the process of what happened when he wronged you. You can sit down at the drawing board and you can say, okay, man, we got to sit down because you know, I can't get past this mentally. I can't, I can't get past the fact that you're disrespecting me. You're hurting me. You're disregarding you know, whole, all, You can lay all the reasons out of why he hurt you and why you want to walk away from this situation. But I feel like a lot of us don't, we don't, we don't like to dig deep. What we like to do is we like to stay on the surface and we just rather hold on to hate, unforgiveness, and you know what I'm saying? In this mind, I deserve and I'm fucking gone. You got me fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gone. I ain't, got, I ain't got to deal with this. So I'm out of it. And I don't think that we, you know what I'm saying, we don't, we don't, we don't show the passion. We don't, we don't show no patience. We don't show no long suffering. We don't show that we, we extend graces. At the end of the day, none of us are perfect. You know what I'm saying? So it's no work together in there. I'm cool. I don't want to deal with nobody. I don't give a damn what your ass rich, whether you got no money, whether you, you know what I'm saying, you got all, if you're a game, you can be on motherfucking point. But if you ain't got no understanding and you don't know how to let no grace, I'm gone. I'm good. I'm good on you. I don't want you. Okay, so it says maybe they don't care, maybe they got a problem, but it's different per person and per situ per situation. Absolutely. You decide what you can or can't take. Mm-hmm. Shoot, maybe you don't care what they do either. How serious is the relationship? That's a good point because you might both be out there doing your own thing. You know what I'm saying? But I just think that if it gets to a point to where it mentally exhausts you, then you need to check out. That's that's just because self health is the best thing. Is the thing that you got to worry about. Because you got people out here. I mean, not me. I ain't people. But you got other folk out here jumping off buildings and killing themselves because they just can't go on. Both of them uh, doing what they want to do? I mean, why y'all there? Like, I don't understand that. Both of us have decided to do whatever it is that we, we want to do. What, what, what if we got still in the situation? I mean, the reality is. I hope okay, it's so, ass ass. so let me say this. Let me say this. Because, like I said, I'm different when it comes to cheating. Um. First off, I don't want nobody to cheat on me. I ain't saying that I'm just open to cheating. But when it comes to cheating and the disres- the cheating is different from the disrespect because you might be with a man right now that treats you like Princess die before she died. You know what I'm saying? She might just be the Queen of Sheba in your eyes and you love her. But maybe sexually you just want a flavor of the month that you make sure. I feel like, sidebar, like... Will and Jada might have always have agreed to have some side and they don't bring it to their house until the world found out about Augustus or whatever. But I just feel like if you go out there and you do what you do and she never knows, who does it hurt? It's disrespectful. I ain't saying it's right. But if I never know and he's still treating me like a queen, what do I do? Go look for it? Because I ain't saying it's right. Cheating is wrong, period. Because I'm just saying we all wrong. If that's not what you want to do, just leave. But if I don't know about it and I'm living my happy life, don't bring me no AIDS in that home. It can still get back to your household. But I just feel like what she don't know or what he don't know won't hurt him. I ain't with that. I ain't saying it's right. I ain't I'm just saying, saying it's with. I'm just saying, ah, no, I, I'm not on it. 
I understand exactly what she's saying. I mean, because I mean, at some point, I mean, shit. If you don't know, I mean, you can't. You can't. You don't know. You can't know nothing about what you don't know. I mean, I think that's what disrespectful comes in. Yeah. Because some people don't care that their spouse knows. Some people are so blatantly disrespectful to their side chick know who they wife is can, and can tell you about what's going on in your household mm -hmm. because your man laid up pillow talking i think it's a line that's crossed whenever you're cheating i think that that's what makes the difference on when a woman stays and goes because some women want so bad to break up your household that they will make sure that you know about it they will start doing stuff to try to throw it out there because they want that spot but they don't understand that spot come with hell and high water so get it and when you get it <laughs> and you realize that that grass that you thought was green is actually plastic, keep that nigga over there and you keep the migraine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 it's a lot of us out there. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of us out there. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sticky thing to walk in. Man. But I, don't, I definitely, I don't give a darn. I want you to, uh, I, I'm, I'm not with you. You need a different flavor of the goddamn month. As long as I don't know about it, you know what I'm saying? Don't bring it to my front door type of goddamn mindset. Fuck that. Be single. Go ahead on. I'm saying, I like I said, the reality of it is, it's a lot of y'all happy, happily married single folks in the world. Happily Men, married, single folks. You folk. happy. You <laughs> in your marriage, but you don't know that your husband is single. That's what I should say, because he out there for the streets. But it keeping you happy and you married and you just don't know it. It's a lot. It, it's a unmarried happy people that's living in bliss that don't know because they man love them enough not to bring the disrespect. But your man out there slinging ding -ling from here to West, West California. Yeah, don't bring that home. Yeah, but the reality of it is, is that you don't know and you happy. You happy until he allows his side chick to get so comfortable that she feel like she can come in your face with it. Absolutely, because now at that point, now you're bringing it to the front door. Because even if they may think that, if, that, that, that their partner is faithful and they ain't out there for the streets when they walk out the door, as you know, long as you're bringing it to my front door, then they straight. Or even they can actually have an understanding that, okay, when my dude walk out this door, he probably out there for the streets. You know what I'm saying? But again, don't let that shit come to my front door, you also may be good at that. But it's just like you said, the moment that you allow this chick to be able to confront me with the whole situation, that was the world knowing I got to find out via the world versus you, then they're disrespected. You know what I'm saying? They feel disrespectful. The, the, the terms change. I, I mean, because you got to know what it is that you're fucking with. So you know that if your chick is all right, as long as she don't find out, and as long as I keep side chick, and check, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's anybody is, is just saying, hey, go do what you do. Just don't tell me all what I'm talking about. I think that some people in that relationship, I think it's just a poly relationship. I, I, I'm never going to a relationship saying, do that, just don't tell me. Like, it ain't I that. Think it's I, a lot I, of, I think, I think that, it's more of that going on out here than you think. I think if a man is upfront and honest and that's what you choose to do, then he, he didn't take your choice from you. I think when a man lies to you or a woman lies to you, Ooh, yeah. they take your choice mm -hmm. in deciding what you want to do because mm -hmm. I can decide if I want to be in a polygamous relationship. But when you go and you put me in one, and you know, voluntarily. involuntarily um, by messing with some, you know, Pat, Rick, and John, then and then I wake up one day and I got AIDS, you put me in a situation that I didn't choose to be in. We all die. So... <laughs> I think it, it is it's based on that, basically. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm in agreement with it. If, it, if you're all right with it, I'm all right with it. As long as we mutually agree to these terms, then it is what it is. I just know I ain't agreeing to none of that shit off the top. Cause yeah, man, I don't think you should. I, I don't share well. I don't share, I don't knowingly share well. Okay, so what do you mean, why are they there? They they not you so change your thinking. What a relationship is to you may not be the same. Um, hold on. May not be the same for them. The disrespect is up for debate depending on the couple's relationship terms. Absolutely, some mistresses are just as important as the wife. So in that situation, it gets sticky. A side chick uh -huh. is a loose cannon. Yes, people are saying that. So Maybe. what I will say is that I think um. Side chicks have gotten bolder now. It's a it's a cool thing to be a side chick because some men and some women for the side dudes make them feel like they have a position. And the reality of it is, is that men eventually sometimes fall in. You know, because back in the day it was always he ain't never gonna leave home. Niggas leaving for these side chicks. Yeah. 
They leaving. That's just the reality. I mean, well, they they not necessarily a side chick. They may have started off as a side chick. But, but you now, got a nigga who's leaving. I mean, y'all put some respect on that side chick. Now. But that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. But but that's the reality. Is all I'm saying. But then the reality of it is, is that if you was a side chick that became a main chick, are you still the side chick? I mean, or no, are you not is, a main you... side chick? Because now you the main what? side chick. What I'm saying is the side chick that won the man or won what she thought was the man. Yeah. You live the rest of your days worrying now, am I the main side chick? Because the same way you got him, you don't think that you got him out of another woman's bed, he ain't jumping to the next woman's bed when he get bored with you? I don't necessarily think that. Do not, do we have an understanding that it can necessarily happen? Oh, and yeah. I'm always a little bit more on the optimistic side. You know, call me gullible, whatever you is, but I'm definitely a little bit more on the optimistic side. Because I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you could be in a situation that you have been in forever, and what it is is people just, we get comfortable. It gets routine, and we just, we ain't gonna walk away. You know what I'm saying? Because you, we, don't gotta, we don't gotta cousin to each other. We done built a life with each other. We got kids. We got assets. But it ain't really, nothing else really here but that. You know what I'm saying? You done outgrew each other, and now you just here. You know what I'm saying? It's work, home, work, home. Occasional date here. Get sex, but it ain't really popping. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure I get my love off. I ain't right here sexually frustrated. I mean, but that, at some point, it just becomes redundant. I mean, but the reality of it is, is when it comes to boyfriend, girlfriend, so be it. But when it comes to a marriage, something that you went before, I think that is something that you should fight for. If you see that it's getting redundant, you see that it's getting played out. Um, do you fight for it or do you just move into the next? It, but if it's, it may be, it, sometimes you just may have, the situation is just not for you no more. I believe that at one point in my life, I just felt like divorce was not an option. You know what I said? Felt like divorce was just not an option. Even though when you fully assess in this situation, clearly know that you guys have outgrown each other. Now you realize that ain't nobody willing to work this junk out to even get out of the, 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 the stuff that they in. I'm okay with moving on. Especially if one person is willing to make it work and the other person is not willing to make it work. Man, at this point in my life, I'm good. I'm okay with that. I want the best for you. If you want to walk away, I'm a side and not a line. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just move on. We go our separate ways. But that also does not mean that I'm not willing to fight. So, you know what I'm saying? To make this junk happen so we can get across this bridge and we can keep it moving. But at some point, sometimes... It comes to an end. I think that's that okay. a lot of things come to an end. I don't think just relationships. And I, and I definitely agree. Sometimes things are just an end. But I think that we got away from saying, um, if a man is a cheater and that's who he is, that's just who he is. If a man falls in love somewhere else, I think it's fair for him to leave because I don't think it's fair to emotionally hurt the person Absolutely. that's standing there waiting for you to love mm -hmm. them and you have moved on already in your mm -hmm. mind and your body is the only thing that's present. It causes the other person to... Have hope. Well, at least he's still coming home. Just take away the false sense of hope. Yeah, I think that right. everybody should be an adult. Be 100 about the situation. Say what you feel. I fell in love with somebody else and I yeah. need to move on. Is that a hard conversation? Is that hard to tell somebody yeah. that you know that yeah. you love? But yes, it's, it's okay. a hard conversation. But is it worse to let them believe that you are yep. you can love them again if you're really not there? Mm -hmm. Move around. Yeah, for me, move it's on. worse for you to sit here and just keep me around knowing damn well that your heart is elsewhere. Don't do me like that. Okay. Walk away. Give me that hard ass conversation. Let's figure out how we're gonna be able to divide all the assets that we're gonna accrue together. Yeah. Because I don't wanna stay in that situation. Yeah. I might not like it. Cause Keisha said okay yes, please don't try to make them stay. And that take me back to the dire glad mad black woman when she was begging her husband, like, don't do this. It's been yeah. 20 years. You can be with a person for 20 years and meet somebody and been with them for a year that make you feel more secure, more loved, more comfortable than somebody that you spent 20 years with because time don't equate to happiness. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we also got to be, you also got to be wise and understand that happiness is not, you ain't going to, you, you're not going to be happy constantly in life all the time. No, right? definitely not. You know what I'm saying? So don't be around here leaving people, don't be around here leaving your house for happy moments, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because you be in that euphoric stage when you meet somebody different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fully assess the situation. Make sure that's something that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? We ain't up here advocating saying leave your, your, your dude, leave Definitely. your wife. We're not up here advocating for that. But we are saying that we understand that life brings about changes. And if you decide that you want to be with somebody else, it's okay. It's cool. Walk away. Yeah, just do it respectfully. Yeah. Handle your business. Nothing. That's just on the page. Okay. That we was on. It's, it's nothing. But we put the notes on your paperwork. Yeah, so I, we went down some of them. Um, we did want to talk what about... What about the texting? So dating people who predominantly text. Yeah. How do you feel about that? 
And I don't know if y'all heard it. So she said dating someone who pr predominantly texts, meaning they they communicate via text more than they do like phone calls. Right. Does it like, matter? It do does. you prefer text? I mean, audience, what do you think? Do you prefer text? Because sometimes I don't want to be bothered. Sometimes you can call me and I text you and say I call you back and be looking at the phone ring. Because sometimes I just don't want to talk. That's fine. I mean, because we all have moments where we don't feel like talking. But what we not going to have is uh, the majority of okay. 80% of our goddamn <laughs> relationship is via text. That's what we're not going to do. I mean, and alpha one, bitch, I skip words. I leave words out. Bitch, I misinterpret shit when I read it, bitch. I've been read something totally different than what it is that you meant via that text. Yeah. Not even just for that particular reason that I'm not okay with the text message. No, I feel like when you like something, you're going to let me know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here. I'm into you. I need you to know. And you're going to be able to, you're going to have to be able to let me know in more than just form of a text. I'm going to need you to be in my face. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely going to need you to make more phone calls than you do text messages because I need to hear you. I need to see you. I need to feel you. I need, I need all of that. I need interaction. Okay. I'm on that all day. At some point, I feel like when you just text me, and then you got to keep in mind, Jennifer, I mean, we are high. Meaning that we get, all, we get a lot of DMs, good morning, all this book that people try to do via text anyway. I mean, you get it too much these guys dog on days. Bye-bye. Show me that you're really interested in me. I'm good, because I'm not, I'm not going to you. Are we introducing this? I ain't going to take, so, take it seriously. So stay tuned for next week? Mm-hmm. Okay, because um, I just want to make sure that we were doing that. Another thing that we had was, at what point does a female... Um, Boss. Oh. How that. how we gonna put that? How you wanna word it? Cause I don't wanna word it wrong. Oh well, this was something else that came from my homeboys. Y'all jacking shit, right? Uh huh. Cause they well, I guess they put this question basically. You have a female boss, like at some point, <laughs> is she still can she still be feminine? Like, I feel like they were saying that the woman, at this point, she on her boss shit. You know what I'm saying? Now she done took up they man. You know what I'm saying? Now, what, what is it that you leave a man to do? Like, I'm saying, is, is that woman still feminine? Like, is she even still a woman? Does she still have that soft touch to her? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what we do. We're real nurturing. We're real caring. We're real attentive. All that extra. You know what I'm saying? Still good shit. All of that. All of that extra stuff that women normally bring to the table. Now we bring it off masculinity energy. Because we have so, our, our boss around. So, what I would say to that is, I think that a woman being in her bag is amazing. I do think that even in your bag, and I'll say this, that I know that in my marriage, um, my husband never made more money than me. Um, but I didn't de demasculate him in that situation. Um, I made sure that we still communicated about everything. I ain't never been like... You know, trying to make him feel less than mm -hmm. because I made more money. Mm -hmm. We had a joint account, so the money was there for whatever we needed to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So, I just think that you can be a boss and still be a, um, not de demasculate the man. I think that you can definitely do that. I think that it takes a strong man to deal with a woman who makes more money than him. I mean, I think that it definitely takes a man to, um... Be able to still love and show support to a woman that makes more than him because I, and, and I always refer a lot to movies. I'm thinking about Madam C.J. Walker, that movie when um, Booker T. Washington told her, I'm not promoting you. We got to get the men out there first. What we look like letting a black woman go before the black man. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I think some men still have that mentality. <laughs> a lot. And I think that it's okay to be a boss and be in your bag and still know how to cater to your man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we, I, I feel like men are presenting this question, right? But they don't, they, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, like, they don't never like to think about the process. I mean, because mm -hmm. most women have really taken on a hundred percent of the stuff because you guys have made them. You guys have places in the position where we got to be on our bullshit. You know what I'm saying? In that we don't want to be home and be that submissive wife and let you take the lead. You know what I'm saying? And we follow all of that good sh sh that you want in the woman, right? That feminine shit, right? I feel like you guys have dropped the ball, and then now we have no choice but to be able to boss up and handle our, handle our shit. But on the same note, that does not mean that we want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Some of us might, but that don't mean that we necessarily want to do it, meaning that we, we never stopped being a female. What we did was, we know how to wear many hats. You know what I'm saying? 
You know how to put on that motherfucking hat, too. I still know how to be a woman. Still know how to love you. I still know how to be sensitive. I still know how to be vulnerable. We know how to do all of those things. And what we try to do is actually wearing your hat, too. As a matter of fact, come take this motherfucker out of my head. Just saying. You can do both. I think mm-hmm. some women are forced to put on that goddamn hat, in, 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 in my opinion. And even if you ain't forced to put on that hat, some people just work well in that category. I mean, and I'm going to pay the devil's advocate. You do have some women out here who, <laughs> you know, they, they like to wear the pins. Yeah. They, yeah, who knows? I don't know why the hell they like that. Maybe it was raised like that or maybe that's just how they was born. You pick and choose your battles. Is that just not the woman for you? Just saying. Ain't the woman for you if that's what you're looking for. Move on. <laughs> In my opinion. Move on, right? I, I mean. Yeah, tell her what you want. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like that ain't what she's doing, then tell her what you want. If she can't bring it to the table, then yeah. let's go ahead on. That's okay to move on. I mean, can, can a woman be too strong and does that intimidate me? And I think that as a woman with four degrees I'm intimidating to a lot of people and then I'm a black mm-hmm. woman who does not walk with my head down mm-hmm. I keep my head to the sky mm-hmm. it's, I'm going to walk in the office and I'm not going to walk into the office with a pencil skirt and try to be cute for you I'm coming in there about mm-hmm. business in a pantsuit to let you know that I'm not coming in here to try to sexually grab your attention mm-hmm. because I come to the table with credentials that I can have without being sexually or flirting with you to get them mm-hmm. I do think that you know in talking to men I am intimidating when I come to the table because having a man and wanting a man is two different things. Um, can I pro- can I provide for Jennifer without one? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Can I take care of Jennifer? Definitely. So you're a man wants to be wanted. Um, a, man, a man wants to be wanted, and a man needs to know that he's needed. And the reality of it is, is that. I've been surviving for a long time by myself. So is a man always needed? No, but it's a difference if your woman wants you versus if she needs you. Because if she needs you, then you are a structure for a purpose. But if she wants you and you don't have a purpose and she still loves you and she still goes out of her way, she still caters to you, it's a big difference between a woman and a need when it comes to a man. I feel like now, if a woman wants you, then it's, it's going to be displayed through... Her actions. Her actually making you feel as though she needs you. You know what I say? Again, if a woman wants you, then how she displays her love, it makes you feel as though that you are needed. It's the difference between the two. Because even though that woman may understand that she don't need nobody but God. You know what I'm saying? The fact that she wants you depends on what type of man it is that she likes. If that dude like his ego stroke or whatever, right? You also want that man to feel like you know what I'm saying? He the head of his family. You his you you know what I'm saying? He, you his you you his cheerleader. You are his biggest supporter. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm here. I'm I'm your mate. I'm your backbone. You know what I'm saying? I'm your helpmate. Whatever it is, is you 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 know what I'm saying? We here to, to tackle this thing together. You know what I'm saying? Just for me, out of my want, I'm gonna make you feel as though that I I, I necessarily need. That, I think that that's how mine comes off. It displays as though I need you. I'm I not and, want and, you. and I think that. It takes a real man to allow a woman like to shine without feel like she's dimming him. Absolutely. Because I'm definitely not going to downplay that I'm educated. I'm not going to downplay that mm-hmm. I can go out there and get the bag. What I'm going to do mm-hmm. is still let my light shine. But in my light shining, I'm not trying to dim his. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? So when I walk into a room yeah. and I'm walking into a corporate room full of males, mm-hmm. I'm not going to dummy myself yeah. down to be what they need me to be. I'm not, pe- I'm not got darn Flair F- F- Flintstone wife. I'm not going to be a uh, Betty Rubbles or <laughs> Wilma. I'm not around here barefoot and pregnant. I'm around here carrying the torch, trying to go get the bag. Now in getting the bag, securing the bag, being educated, I don't want to make a man feel like I'm not approachable, you know? And I think that just depends on the man because you shouldn't feel like, an educated woman can't be approached. You shouldn't feel like, you know, because that just speaks about who you are as a man. If a woman with an education who goes and get the bag makes you feel insecure. If you're not adequate within your own mindset, that's an issue that you have to deal with. Now, if 90% of the men feel like you are approachable, then you might need to go back to the drawing board and look at yourself in the mirror. But for the most part, I definitely agree with you. you know what I'm saying? And ninety percent of the men that feel that way are ninety percent of the male in that circle. Sounds to me like you need to move out of the circle. Well, I'm not saying just in the circle. I'm just saying in general. But I, I 
it's not that I'm not, because I'm, I'm not saying that I disagree with you. Because I do believe that there are women who carry themselves like that. Just like the men are saying. You know what I'm saying? And they're not giving the man no room in them. You know what I'm saying? I do believe that if some of us women need to go back in the mirror and they need to adjust that because at the same time you may want to want you may want a man, but you ain't making no room in there for that motherfucker. Go back to the mirror. You gotta re-examine that junk. You gotta get you you gotta go in there and reconstruct some stuff. You gotta change some this some month. of the ways that you do everything. That don't mean, you know what I'm saying, dim your light. You just gotta you it's you gotta find a different way to function if you want a man, period. Um, well, I know for me. I ain't gonna be able to dim my light. I'm, I didn't say that. No, I'm, just, I'm saying for me. I understand what you're saying for others, but for me, I know who I am and I stand on that. And I'm not changing who I am because let me explain why I say that. Because a lot of people get in relationships and they become who their partner needs them to be. And in becoming who your partner needs you to be, you forget who you are. And forgetting who you are, eventually your true self is going to shine. And when the person that you are starts to be in who you are in a relationship and it's no longer the person that they started dating, the one that was doing, oh, bow down, oh, I need, oh, it's a difference because when you start being who you are because you changed to be what they needed for you to be for them, then you're no longer compatible because he wanted who he needed you to be and not who you actually are. So I have to continue to be who I am and they will be somebody that will love me who I am in this spot. I and not who they want exists. me to be. I think that lane exists, Jennifer, as well. But I'm just talking about the person who needs, who have been used to being able to, who who lives in this lane and being able to function and have to don't have to consider anybody else. When you have now come out of the single category, you are now in the couple category. You gotta definitely know how to work with a motherfucker. Well, I mean, I don't been in relationships anything like I can't find relationships. So I know I'm just saying. But I just want people to know that if somebody needs you to be who you are, I'm saying not who you are, and need because men tend to want to build women to be what they want because they need the butt from her, the titties from her, the mind from her. They want to build a woman. That's why they have so many. If a man truly wants is securing himself, he'll accept you for who you are. And the comments we have. You're gonna need to. Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm an old-fashioned, like, you know, I was raised with my dad. I was raised by my grandmothers. You know what I'm saying? So I know how to cater. When the right man comes along, he definitely getting catered to. I'm not so strong that I don't know how to cater. I'm not so strong that I don't know how to let a man be the head of my household because I know how to do all of that. But in doing that and building the relationship, because I'm not invested in one, I can walk away from the beginning before it gets too late in a relationship where I see where it's, um, mm -hmm. you know, issues at. In our comments, we have, it's a lot of CJ Walker spouses out there because they think they can handle women like, but most of them can't. If he don't feel needed, that man will leave. That was definitely an issue in CJ Walker. It was because, and I think that the more so about it was, he was too, his mind. A man can have a small mindset and a woman has a bigger mindset, which is what I think happened in that movie. Um, he wanted to stay small. He thought that growth was big, but Madam T.J. Walker had so many goals and dreams. You have to have a, a spouse that supports your dream and not want to stifle you. Mm -hmm. Because if there's room for you at the top in the Rockefeller lane, take it to the Rockefeller lane. Why would I stay down here as a hundred year when I have the potential to be a millionaire because my husband or my spouse feels like leave well enough alone. We're good where we're at. No, at this point, we need multiple streams of income. Um, Stop thinking that that light is only hers when, when you guys are a couple. You can share it together. Ours. And I think that another thing about that was his dad kept saying to him, you keep saying hours, 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 but Madam, but Sarah is saying hers. So I don't think yeah. she included him because she constantly said my business. Well, you got to catch that too. So it was in that, <laughs> in that it was both, it was both ways that it could have been handled differently. Yeah. Um, another comment says, we do need them. For you to say you don't is crazy. It's not just a financial need, but a need in many other ways. Um, for me, I think that a need of a man is definitely a need of a man or a need of a woman. Everybody wants some, some sort of compatibility, some sort of companionship. When I said a need, you definitely need men to change your tires, but you got women out here changing tires. So a need and a want, I'm not saying that you don't need one because I've been without one for a while. There's a lot of people who don't have a man. A need for one, um, and a lot of men that don't need, don't have a woman because we ain't yeah. just isolated to us. But yes, yeah. So I mean, I think that it just depends on the woman who wants a, a one and a need. You know what I'm saying? A need is 
I need food to survive. I need air to breathe. I need you to procreate. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not having no more children, so I don't need a man to make no more kids. So it's for me, it's just based on the the, the verbiage of a need. <laughs> Y'all know what the hell yeah, we mean when we say we all need them. Yeah, jokes. because I'm 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 not being being literal. Needing a man is not factual because you don't need. If, if I never had another man for the rest of my life, it wouldn't stop me from living. That's that's just a fact. Now wanting is different because you want to have somebody to love you. So for me, that's why I say that. Um, but I can't speak for everybody. If you want a man, sometimes change is required in vice. Vice versa. Be wise enough to know that nobody is perfect because you most definitely are not. Just because you change something doesn't mean you must change everything. I certainly agree. I certainly agree with that because there are some things in well, actually, in every relationship, it's going to be a give and take. You better not. It's some things that you're going to have to give on for a relationship to work. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying I'm not willing to change. What I'm saying is, if I'm starting a relationship. And I see where the flaws are. If the flaws are something that I'm willing to work with, then I'm staying. But a liar, I ain't willing to work with that. I, I'm just not because there's not a reason to lie. That's just me. Say what it is. Not in the beginning. Because if you start, I think that's how you're going to finish. And if you lie about something petty, like something super petty that didn't require a lie, now I'm looking at you. If you would lie about something that small, what else will you lie about? So... I definitely agree with the comments that some change is required because it's give and take. But we, we've been on for an hour. Um, we want to introduce some things and let y'all know what the next plans are before we get off our live. Um, we plan on doing... Uh, you want to um, go into detail about what we got going on or you want me to try to explain it? Okay. Well, we realized that the platform has definitely grew, right? Because of support. We appreciate you. So what we have done in uh, response to the platform growing, of course, I've hired a business manager, being Jennifer. So we put a lot of things in place and not only show our appreciation for the supporters, uh, but we also put some things in place where we can make sure that we network and work with each other and also things to make sure that we brand and get the name out there. So with that being said, we do have some giveaways that's coming up. Correct. And um, well, should we give them the details? Or should we just so, so we won't give you all the details. What we will say is that it would be wise to tune in next week. We're going to go into details about what it would take for you to win our giveaways. We don't want to give away all the details because we need you to tune in next week. So, that, um, when we go live, so that you can hear all the details on some amazing giveaways that we have going on, you will not be disappointed. Yeah. So just be tuned in for a flight. It's flight gonna come first, and then it's gonna be well. You're, the details on the in the, the details the details are gonna be in the flyer. So I'm just saying, just be tuned in. Pay attention. Get your set, <laughs> set your notifications for when talk when when talk go go live. <laughs> set your details. Not a sensible two. Sensible two point <laughs> Talk yo, go live. <laughs> yeah, so make sure that you guys always mm -hmm. inbox me with your topic suggestions. Inbox me if you're interested in being a guest. Inbox me if you're interested in bringing me to your city because I think y'all be forgetting that this podcast is a pop up podcast. You know what I'm saying? Because we'll be on the go. So be on the lookout for that too because I might be in your state. I might be in your city because the girl coming at you. So, uh, but of course, we thank you guys so much for tuning in to the show. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that you're liking and sharing and commenting. And just make sure you follow us on all the other platforms, via YouTube and all the other social media platforms. But until then, y'all already know it's always great doing the show with my best friend. Y'all see her a lot more. <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's via documents <laughs> or whether it's in your face. I'm <laughs> just saying. Period. But until then, we we'll you next time. Peace out. Thank you for joining. Peace out. Peace. Ooh. In the Middle East. It, it, right. How I stop it? Look, because I don't be on this end too much.